Good morning, City Gate Church. Look at this crowd. Look, look at the church you go to, folks. Just take a moment and admire what God's doing here at City Gate Church. Then look at somebody around you and just say, I'm glad you're sitting next to me today. Because there was this other person trying to sit next to me and I didn't want to sit next to them. I'm glad you sat next to me. You look beautiful. Wow, incredible. So good to see everybody here today. Last night, the youth revival was just simply amazing. And we're honored to have Pastor Colin with us here today. Colin, will you stand up? This is the young man holding that revival. And I'm telling you, he's a preacher, folks. And it continues tonight. What time? Six o'clock tonight. It's going to be great. And uh, so just 50, 51 salvations last night. 51. That's just tremendous. City Gate Online, it sure is good to see you this morning joining us around the world. We thank God for our City Gate Online congregation. Folks, will you just put your hands together? Let them know how much we love and appreciate them. They watch all around the world. We thank God for you. Well, I'm excited to get into this sermon today. I really am. Continuing with Marvel. And how when Jesus would perform miracles, people would step back and they would marvel. And it is my prayer today, because we're going to have an altar call at the end of this sermon, and it is my prayer today that God does something so great, you walk out of this room marveling at His power. And you turn around and say, I serve a marvelous God. Now I'm believing and I'm preaching for healing and complete restoration. Not just physical healing. Now let me tell you, there is nothing more exciting than seeing somebody get physically healed. But there are people that are dealing with spiritual sickness today. Emotional sickness today. Sickness is in their mind. You know what? God doesn't just heal those that are sick in the physical. He can heal you completely inside and out. And I believe he'll do it today. Father, we just thank you. Your Holy Spirit is in this room. And I thank you for what you've already done. But now we are anticipating you to do so much more. You are a great God. You don't meet expectations. You exceed the expectations. You are the Ephesians 3.20 God. Unto him who is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that which we could ever ask or even think. Do it in this place today is my prayer. In Jesus' name. And everyone said amen. Now do me a favor, and uh, I want you just to take your hand and just hold your hand out. And just look at your hand. Look at your hand. Folks, th this is a magnificent creation. Think about all the thought that God put into just creating your hand. Do you know that there are people today that exclusively study the human hand? and how it works and and there are scientists that are trying to replicate for somebody who has maybe lost a limb or they've lost their hand they're trying to replicate through robotics the movement of a human hand and while they get close they just can't seem to do it the way that God did it because God's such an amazing creator and that hand and you know what we primarily use that hand for of course picking up and throwing and things like that, but we use our hand for touch. Now I want you to take your hand and I want you to reach over and touch the person next to you, appropriately. Touch the person. <laughs> Not everybody may be saved yet, so I gotta, <laughs> gotta give them little instructions. <laughs> now think about the power of a touch. The power of a touch. Touch in the womb is the first of your five senses to develop before you can smell taste see or hear you can feel touch it's developed at eight weeks in the mother's womb and it remains perhaps the most emotionally central throughout all of our lives just a simple one finger touch is governed by an exquisite array of receptors. It can distinguish the difference 
between your external environment. This finger can feel fast or slow. It can feel hard or soft. It can feel hot and even cold. Now, I want you, as you were, came in today, in your seat, there was a Band-Aid. If you didn't get one, raise your hand. We'll bring one to you. But I want you to take that Band-Aid out, and I want you to open it up, and I want you to peel off those little strips, and I want you to take that Band-Aid and put it right on the top of your hand, right here on the top of your hand where you can see it. And please remember, we are in the house of God so do not throw your trash on the floor. Put it into the purse next to you. They won't get upset. It'll be okay. Now, as you're doing that, I'm going to tell you a couple other little facts. Those receptors in your skin, some react only to a caress. Some are designed to send pain. Some tell you when you have an itch. But each sensitivity activates a different part of your brain. It can make you feel soothed. It can make you feel hurt. A touch can make you feel comfortable. The wrong touch can make you feel distressed. You know the difference between an angry touch and a loving touch. I found this out. I thought this was interesting. Holding hands or giving and receiving hugs on a regular basis can lower your blood pressure and calm a racing heartbeat. Now, if you are a single guy in the room, that was your opportunity to look at another single lady and say, baby, you could save my life. And ladies, that's your opportunity to look back and say, the Lord giveth and he taketh you away. <laughs> Sorry about your luck. <laughs> See, the, to the story I'm going to talk to you about today is the story of 10 lepers, 10 leprous men who would never be able to touch anyone again. And rather than just read this scripture and preach to you this message and you hear their story, I want you to feel their story. Let's go to the Bible. Now it happened as he went to Jerusalem that he passed through the midst of Samaria and Galilee. Then as he entered a certain village, there met him 10 men who were lepers who stood afar off and they lifted up their voices and said, Jesus, Master, have mercy on us. So when he saw them, he said to them, go, show yourselves to the priests. And so it was that as they went, they were cleansed. And one of them, when he saw that he was healed, returned and with a loud voice glorified God and fell down on his face at his feet, giving him thanks. And he was a Samaritan. So Jesus answered and said, Were there not ten cleansed? But where are the nine? Were there not any found who returned to give glory to God except this foreigner? And he said to him, Arise, go your way. Your faith has made you whole. I want you to say these two words, made whole. Made whole. Say it again, made whole. made whole. This man's story could have sounded something like this. For five years, I've touched no one. I've not been close enough to touch anyone. What is common for you, I long for. A tap on the shoulder to get my attention. A kiss on my cheek. I long to just be bumped into accidentally. I'm not allowed on the streets. I'm not allowed in the synagogue. I'm not even welcome in my own home. I cannot touch 
or be touched by anyone. I'm fascinated by this group of 10 leprous men, the Bible calls them, but especially this one man. See, in the times of the Bible, while leprosy doesn't carry the weight today that it carried back then because of our medical advancements, we have medicine to treat this. Back then, leprosy was a death sentence. It was the most dreaded disease that anyone could contract. Leprosy, if you don't know what it is, is a slowly, and the key word is slowly, progressing bacterial infection that affects the skin, the peripheral nerves in the hands and the feet, and the mucous membranes in the nose, the throat, the eyes, and your ears. It leads to a loss of sensation or, here's the key word, numbness in the affected areas. It's been said that as the nerves are dying, it's intense pain until one day the pain is gone and you are left numb. The loss of sensation means that a small cut can go unnoticed and become extensively infected. A leper may not even notice the cut until the infection is severe enough to be visually obvious. This results in the loss of fingers or toes or in other visible deformities. Something else, people that have studied leper, uh, leper colonies, one of the things they've discovered is that where these people congregate, they're is an infestation of rodents. And because the people have no sensitivity, because they cannot feel, when they lay down to go to sleep at night, rodents will come and feed on them, eating their ear or their nose. They wake up with parts of their body missing. You say, how's that possible? Because of the loss of sensitivity, the loss of their ability to feel, they don't even know they're being consumed when they're asleep. Here's the big idea. Leprosy is death by inches. In Scripture, the leper is symbolic of an ultimate outcast. Infected by a condition he didn't seek. Rejected by the very people he knew. Avoided by people he doesn't know. And condemned to a future that he is not able to bear. And in the mind of each of these outcasts must have been the memory of the day that they were forced to face this painful truth. Life for me will never be the same. Where were you when you made that statement? Where were you when you looked up and said, life for me will never be the same? Was it the day that the divorce papers were signed and you realized life for you will never be the same? Was it the day you tried the first drug or took the first drink of alcohol and you re realized at that moment, life for me will never be the same. Was it when you lost your virginity and you went home worried, am I pregnant? Did I catch a disease? But you recognized at that moment, as common as everyone else has made it out to be, you knew for you that moment marked the moment that life for you will never be the same. I hate to even say it, but could it have been the time that you were molested? Someone you trusted took advantage of you. Someone forced themselves upon you. And you say, well, that's, that, that, that can't be anybody in this room. Statistics today say, and this statistic is growing smaller. It says by the time they're 18, one in three young ladies will be sexually molested. How many is that? One to you. One to you. 
one to you. And you knew after that moment that that person did that to you, life for you would never be the same and you have carried the guilt and you have carried the shame, the enemy lying to you, making you believe that you did something wrong. Maybe I could just, uh, just say something right here. You did not do anything wrong. That person was a monster who did that to you. Don't you let them put that guilt and that shame. Don't you let the devil lie to you and make you think that you are what they did to you. Life for you would never be the same. This man's story could have sounded something like this. I was out one day gathering wood. We were going to make a fire and, and cook over it that night. My wife and my young child. And so I gathered the wood and I brought it over and I laid it on the fire. And when I did, one of the coals leapt out and it burnt me on top of the hand. Now, I didn't think anything about it. This had happened before. It's not the first time I'd burned my hand. But I noticed after a few weeks, the burn is not healing. And now there is white that is growing around this wound. I'm starting to lose my grip. I go to pick things up and I drop them. I, I don't have strength in my hand anymore. The other day I was out working and when I came home, my wife gasped because the front of my robe was covered in blood. I had cut myself and didn't even know it. And now we know what I must do. I must go show myself to the priest. If he declares that I have leprosy, I will be isolated and I will be condemned to die in a colony of people who share my disease. I look at my wife, she looks at me. I touch her on the shoulder, she touches me on mine. I see my little child crying at her side. One final touch. And now when anybody approaches, this man has to yell, unclean, unclean, stay back. You can't come any closer. I'm unclean. There was no more terrifying word when you were walking down the street that you could hear when somebody yelled unclean. At the, at the shout of that word, mothers would grab their children and move to the other side. Stay away from them. Stay away from them. Men would turn and walk the other direction. Why? Because you could not get close lest you touch someone who is infected with leprosy. But I've learned you don't need leprosy to feel isolated, cast out, secluded, or even diseased. There are people right now in church sitting here today that are infected and affected by spiritual leprosy. And you are trying to find the people that share your disease. And you keep people from getting close to you. I wonder what would happen if we went back to the old days and we made people cry out their sickness when they come into the church. Oh, I'm not talking heart disease, diabetes. No, that's all I'm talking about. I'm saying when you come through the doors, doors, anxiety. I got anxiety. Depression. I'm depressed. If you're having a good day, don't sit next to me because I'm depressed. Drug addict. I got a fix in the parking lot before I even came into the church. Alcoholic. I spend my paycheck. I drink it away every week. I beat my wife after I get drunk. That's who I am. Pornography. I'm bound and I can't get set free. Suicidal. I didn't even want to wake up this morning. All I think about is taking my life. I'm suicidal. No, we don't make people do that. But you're crying out with your actions. And your demeanor. 
And only God knows how many are truly infected and affected in this room by spiritual leprosy. The leprous, the, the leprous that, are, that are infected with depression and loneliness and eating disorders and cutting and no self-esteem and struggling and suicidal and addicted and slowly and painfully you are becoming numb. You felt God three Sundays ago, but now you don't feel him. Has God changed? Or have you just slowly been growing numb because of your sickness? Five years of leprosy. He wakes up. There's a new wound on his hand. Fingers are now missing. He doesn't want people to see the shape that he's in. So he starts wrapping himself in bandages, just like you do. No, 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 I'm not talking about a bandage, I'm talking about a smile. Wrap that smile on your face. Don't let people know what you're going through. Just wrap that, fix your face, come on, come on, I'll hold it together, hold it together, but on the inside, you are slowly dying and you're slowly becoming numb. Missing fingers, his face is mangled portions of his ears and his nose are gone. And he shakes his crippled hand to the sky. And he says, why me? I was faithful to my wife. I was faithful to my child. I was in your house every week. Why did you let this happen to me? But there is no response, only silence. And so he lays down and he goes to sleep. When he wakes up in the morning and rubs his eyes, something feels different about today. It's as if the atmosphere has been charged with change. He's not felt in so long, but today he feels something he's never felt before. There's something moving in his direction. There's a large crowd. They're coming down the road. There's all kinds of commotion. And he wakes up his buddies and he says, what's going on over there? There's so much noise. There's so much shouting. There, there's so much talking. What, what, are, what are they excited about? Who's in the middle of that crowd? And just then somebody breaks loose and, there's, and they're going down the street and they're saying, you'll never believe what just happened. This man took mud, rubbed it in a blind man's eyes, and he got his sight back. And just then somebody else breaks loose and say, I watched him take his fingers. I, I, knew this, I knew this guy since he was a kid. He was deaf, but the man took his fingers, put them in his ears, and his hearing came back to his deaf ears. And somebody else breaks loose and say, you think that's amazing? I watched him raise a 12-year-old girl who was dead back to life again. Again. And somebody said, yeah, but did you see what happened on his way to heal that girl? There was a woman who had been sick for 12 years. She came crawling on her hands and knees and just brushed the hem of his garment. And immediately she was healed. And then somebody else breaks loose and says, I even hear he heals the lepers. And something came alive on the inside of that man because here's this is what I want you to hear today. The greatest miracle God has ever performed is the one that you need. I'm glad he heals blind eyes, but my eyes see. I'm glad he heals deaf ears, but my ears are working. I'm glad he raised the dead, but I ain't dead yet. But when I heard he heals the lepers, that's the miracle that I want to know about. See, listen, I'll rejoice when people get a new house. Praise God for that. I'll rejoice when people get a new car. Praise God for that. But if I just got a diagnosis from the doctor, I don't need a house and I don't need a car. But when somebody steps up here and says, let me tell you about how God healed me 
from the top of my head. That's the miracle that I need. Somebody praise him right now. And I see him looking at his buddies and he's saying, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. I need you just to turn around you and touch nine people and tell them, get up, 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 get up. Let's stop sitting in our self-pity. Let's stop sitting here until we die. Today may just be our day. He may reject us. He might turn us away. He may tell us to get away. But there's a chance. There's just a chance that we're going to get his attention. And if we get his attention, tell somebody, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up, get up. See, I've learned something. There was this word we used when I was a kid growing up called wannabes. You a wannabe. What it means is you just want to be. And there's a big difference between somebody who wants and somebody who needs. And the wannabes will come in this service and leave just like they came. But the need to's. I need to be healed. I can't go another week with this. I can't go another month with this. I can't wait one more day. I need Jesus. So guess what they did? They broke protocol. There's only one word they're allowed to yell. Unclean. But these men said we're breaking the rules today. Jesus. Master, have mercy on us. I'm telling you, I felt that all the way to the bone when I just said that. Jesus. You say, why did they say have mercy? Because you can't buy this miracle. You can't earn this miracle. This miracle's not dependent on how good you've been. This miracle's dependent on how big of a mess that you're in. And there are people who can't get them out of the hole they put themselves in. And you just need to look up today and say, have mercy. Somebody shout have mercy. I know I'm a drug addict, but have mercy. I know I'm addicted, but have mercy. I know I've got an anger issue, but have mercy. I know I'm suicidal, but have mercy. Woo! Have mercy, oh God. Now, I know we got... We got fancy people in the room, dignified folks in the room, influencers in the room, and you cannot afford to make a scene and mess up your jacket. Okay, this message ain't for you. I'm preaching to the people who are desperate. I'm preaching to the people who will make whatever scene they got to make if it means I'm going to get his attention. All I need is his attention. I need somebody to get his attention this morning. Come on. If you're desperate, shout. If you're broken, shout. If you're sick, shout. If you're hurting, shout. Have mercy. Have mercy. Man, I'm telling you, the power of God is in this room right now. The Holy Ghost is in this room right now. Have mercy. I don't deserve it. Have mercy.
I want to move, but I feel like the Holy Ghost is doing something right there on that word, have mercy. I feel like the Holy Ghost is changing something on that word, have mercy. messed up. I know you failed. I know you're the one that made the mess, but have mercy, oh God. If you could have done it yourself, you'd have never needed mercy. If you could have bought it yourself, you wouldn't need mercy. If you could have lived good enough to earn it, you wouldn't have needed mercy. That's what makes mercy so marvelous. Have mercy. And Jesus stops. And he sees them. He doesn't lay hands on them. He doesn't pour oil on them. He just says, go. Show yourself to the priest. Because the one who condemned them is the only one who can renounce their judgment. So these men go, okay? And nothing happened. And this is where you give up. Nothing happened, God. I thought, I thought you gave me a word, God, but nothing happened. God's waiting on you to do one thing. And the Bible says, as they went, they were healed. They were cleansed of their leprosy. As they went, you've been waiting on God. God's been waiting on you. Because the God gave you the word. And now if you'll be obedient to the word, the miracle's going to catch you. But watch. Watch. This one brother. Here they go, they're hobbling. Remember, they're missing toes and fingers and parts of their body. And I can hear them. Can you hear what they're thinking? Who am I gonna hug first? I can't wait to see my wife. I can't wait to pick up my child. I can't wait to have dinner around the family table again. And then this one brother turns. And you say he's disobedient. Jesus gave him a command, go show yourself to the priest. I think this brother's the only one that got it right because when he turned, he wasn't disobedient. He was going back to the great high priest. And here he comes hobbling back. Now, pastor, you missed it. Why is he hobbling back to Jesus? The Bible says as he went, he was healed. Why is he still hobbling? I'll tell you why. Two things. Number one, leprosy kills the nerves. Now you think it would be a good thing to never be able to feel pain again. There are people that are actually born with a condition they can't feel pain. They break bones and they don't know it. They strain muscles and they don't know it. It's a curse, not a blessing. But because of the enemy working in your life, he has made you increasingly numb. This is why you get out of one bad relationship into a worse, into a worse, because you don't know how to feel pain anymore. But the first thing God's going to give you back is your ability to hurt. He's going to let you know that's not a relationship for you. That's not where you belong. I'm restoring pain so you know where you're supposed to be and where you're not supposed to be. But your Bible says he comes and he falls down at the feet of Jesus. Jesus says, were there not ten of you? Where are the other nine? Only this one man came back to give glory to God. 
go your way. Your faith has made you sozo. Sozo means nothing missing, nothing broken. We translate it whole, but it actually means sozo, nothing missing, nothing broken. While the other nine brothers got healed of the leprosy, they were still missing fingers and toes and parts of their ears and parts of their nose. But when this one man came back to say, thank you, Jesus, Jesus said, your faith has made you whole. And when those words, so so, came out of his mouth, fingers started popping back onto that man's hand. His toes grew back. He felt something on the side of his head and he reached up and his ear was back and his nose was back. And everywhere there was a wound, he was completely restored. What am I saying? I'm saying there's something better than a healing. You can be made whole. You can be made whole. I'm not just asking God to take the disease away. I'm asking him to put back everything the disease took. Listen. You can be healed and not whole. All nine of those men, they did not have leprosy, but the rest of their life, they would have to wear bandages to hide the missing parts. But this one man, see people who were far off got healed, but the one who got close got made whole. And you know what Jesus did? He gave him a reason to take the bandage off. And that's what God's about to do for somebody in this room today. God's not going to bring you down to this altar and just heal you and you walk out wearing the bandages. God's going to give you a reason to take the bandages off because he's not just going to heal you. You are going to be made whole. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing missing, nothing broken. <laughs>